Thanks for joining the Sourdough for Science project. I'm Erin McKenney, professor at NC State University, and I am helping Rob Dunn to research sourdough starters and the microbial communities in them. Today, I'm going to lead you through an introductory demo video on how you too can create your very own starter from scratch. What you need is a small jar. This is a half pint jar. It's gonna have water and flour. Now, for this project, because we've scaled down to a half pint jar, you only need a rounded one cup of flour and equal amounts of water. So we're gonna add two level tablespoons of rye flour. And try and get them as level as you can, two tablespoons of water. Always equal parts. And then, trusty spoon, we're gonna stir it all up. We're gonna make sure that all of the dry bits of flour are incorporated into what is going to become kind of a, a glorified paper mache paste. Using the tip of the spoon to scrape down the sides, and next, I want to measure the pH. You really only need about half an inch of pH paper. That much, just enough. You can dip out a pea-sized amount of sourdough and lay one side of your paper so that the starter can soak through one side, but you can still wipe that flour glop off so you get a clear reading of the color. And then you hold it right up to that color key and do a matching game. That's a solid 5.0. Then we also want to take a reading of the height of this flour and water mixture. What we're predicting is that over time, microbes, bacteria, and yeast from the environment are going to settle in and colonize this nutritional glob. And as they grow, they're going to create gases and they're also going to multiply. With those powers combined, we're going to see the starter rise. So what I need here is a ruler. Oh, here's one. Oh, perfect. All right, so we're gonna use metric because we're working in science, right? Inches, not today. Lean your ruler flush against the tabletop so that you can really get a good reading. And I'm gonna say this is 23 millimeters high. And then you'll record day zero because this starter has had zero days to grow so far. So we wanna put a lid on this, but we don't want a solid lid because we do want colonization to occur. A paper towel is great for keeping flies or big chunks of things that might be flying through your house or classroom uh, from landing into your starter, but bacteria and yeast can still filter through that paper towel. So we've got our starter mixed together, ready to go. We're just gonna set that aside for 24 hours. And the next day, pull out your starter, see what's happened. Looks like we've definitely got some changes here. So let's take off that lid. Let's get our trusty ruler out. And we wanna make sure always, always measure before you mix because the height of the starter is affected by all the little bubbles produced by the bacteria and yeast that are fermenting the sugars and starches in that flour and water mixture. So if you stir it up, you pop the bubbles and you deflate your starter. Nobody wants a deflated starter. They just feel so deflated. So we set up our ruler and this is now a solid 35 millimeters. Now we stir it up. We're evenly distributing any fermentation products throughout the entire kind of gloppy mixture. And those fermentation products include acid made by the bacteria. The acid is really important ecologically because molds and other food spoiling or microorganisms do not like acid. And in order to measure it properly, we need those acids thoroughly evenly distributed throughout the sourdough starter. Once we've mixed everything up, Take a little bit out on your spoon. Again, lay one side of your paper into the starter. Wipe it off. Oh my gosh, color change too. All right, lay it against your color key. We've gone from a 5.0 to a 3.5. 
really important for y'all working at home or in the classroom. Not every starter is going to have such a drastic change over 24 hours. After we've taken our measurements, we're going to do a thing called back slopping. Back slopping is removing a whole tablespoon of this starter. And that's making more space for our microbes to have room to grow. So now we add in equal parts, one tablespoon of flour and one tablespoon of water. Stir it all up. I like to think I can hear these little microbes cheering as they get fed. Yay! Influx of nutrients! We stirred it up, we fed it, put our little lid back on, and put it away for another day. There you go. Do the same thing for about 10 days, 14 days if you have the time. Monitor the growth and the change in pH over those 10 to 14 days. Send us your data. Follow the link on our website to upload your data so that we can compare your starters to all the other starters that other people are making with different types of flour or the same types of flour all across the world. And you too can help us figure out how microbes help us to bake our daily bread.